and welcome back to the channel hope everybody's doing well and in today's video we're going to take a closer look at this clamp meter from testo the 770-3 i use this for part of the inrush testing measurements that i made i'll leave a link to those two videos in the description box below but i had issues with the measurements i made with this with the ac coming out higher than the specified values that i calculated so we're going to take a closer look at this instrument today. We'll look at the other functions and we'll do some standard current measurements just to see if they are in specification or not. Uh, if you've not heard of Testo before, they are a German manufacturer, although I believe their instruments, certainly this one, is made in China. Um, they are more renowned for instruments like flue gas analyzers, uh, refrigerant analyzers, temperature instruments, those kind of things. And if you're in the HVAC industry, you will probably be aware of these testo meters they do seem to be popular with them as well as those kinds of analyzers they do have a few basic electrical instruments uh, this clamp meter here is top of the range of a series of three instruments um, with it having power functionality that the other instruments don't have uh, on the testo uk website this will set you back around about 215 pounds looks to be the recommended retail price um, shopping around, we got that for £182.40 pence on test meter. Um, so for your money, you obviously get the instrument itself, we get a set of silicon insulated test leads, and then we get a bit of paperwork. Uh, you get this here, which is a inspection certificate, um, which kind of lists the tests they've done on it, but just passed, there's no values, there's no markings on this to indicate that the instrument it matches the instrument the instrument does have a serial number but that's not on this at all as i say no values there's no indication of the test apparatus they used or any iso quality procedure or anything so i think it's something they just print off for their instruments and include um, you do get a startup instructions uh, which are mostly pictorial there that you can see uh, one for each of the measurements it's capable of making. And then we do get a multilingual manual there. Um, it covers uh, eight languages. Um, so it gives you a full description and all your specifications and so on. Uh, that all comes in a little cardboard box or rather a large cardboard box that I've managed to wreck now. Um, and that is your lot. Uh, you can get a Testo branded case for it, which is this one here, and that will set you back £34.80. Um, it is a kind of semi hard case that there's uh, plenty of room for the instrument. Um, so slide them in there, and then a couple of other pockets for the rest of your uh, accessories that you've got. The manual kind of does go in there. Um, but it is a bit of a tight squeeze, so you can get it all in this bag if you want to. But as I said, it's an optional extra. You're going to have to go out and purchase it. To one side, got our leads to one side. So our little instrument itself, it's uh, a little bit bigger than our UT216C, as you can see there. A bit bulkier, but a much larger screen. With regards to our H2. Our HT208D, I should say, um, you can see it's pretty much the same size as that one there. Um, the fundamental difference between these instruments, you have your usual clamp working there that opens up on one side of the jaw. Uh, this has a rather unique uh, retractable tongue, if you like. And that means you can get this in tighter places, certainly on some of the cabling that I work on that's quite solid larger size, you can't move it. It's easier to put this one in and hook it through rather than trying to work this one the way through and it uh, kind of gets jammed. So that's what attracted me to this instrument, this quite novel uh, clamp operating mechanism there. Um, with regard to the case, that's all hard plastic. You've got soft uh, feel, rubbery kind of orange bits there. Um, again, you've got a soft feel on the actual function switch there and everything else is hardened plastic. Our three buttons here at the bottom min max, inrush 
our light and Bluetooth. And then we have a zero, which also does degrees C and degrees F. Select function to take you through these different measurement capabilities that it has. And then a hold button on the right hand side there. Um, jacks for this are in the bottom. They are quite recessed, but I've not had any problem with getting any leads in there. All the leads I've tried on them have been compatible. And then around the back there, we've got our battery compartment, which is two screws in there to hold it in place. And they are three AA batteries required to power the instrument. Um, so that's our instrument. We'll get back to doing the measurements on this. So we'll take a quick look at our leads themselves. I said I believe they are silicon insulated um, straight jacks that you see there. They don't come with any other accessories. They do have these shrouds that are removable. Um, and these are kind of a rubberized shroud as well. They're not hard plastic. So you can take them away. And you have a threaded section on the probe tip there. However, I can't find anything that screws on that I have. So I can't get either of these to screw on. This is the gold plated one from Bryman. And it doesn't want to screw on at all. And then our one from Fluke, uh, that doesn't want to screw on either. Um, it starts, but then it won't go any further. So uh, I don't know what size thread that is. The only other threaded item I have is this from Fleur, which comes with the IM75. And this is way bigger. And if I try and get them in there, and you see it's not going to screw up. It just comes out straight away so yeah can't find uh, anything that matches that thread so you're kind of stuck with something that will go on to these uh, probe tips you can't use a standard four millimeter um, these here are from Bryman um, they do lock on and appear to work okay however they are obviously quite a small clip but they only cost you uh, five you could pick up these for four or five pounds in the UK so they're quite good value for money the other ones are my RS Pro, which again are probe tip, and they will go in. They don't quit, kind of fit quite as nicely as the Prime ones, ones do, um, but these are also quite cheap, and they set you back uh, £11.35 for a set from RS Components, so you could use them uh, to save replacing the leads completely. Um, alternative, you can this is a very, very cheap one from um, the no brand uh, rebranded insulation testers that I test sometimes, and that does clip on as well, um, although it is a, a little bit kind of loose and rattly around. So they uh, do seem to get better from the RS clip or the Bryman clip. With regard to accessing the terminals, obviously, without the shrouds on, there's no problems there. They will go into all of them. As soon as you put the shroud on, you uh, get into problems. Uh, these SAK 4s and 2.5s, you've got no chance. The 6 there, uh, it doesn't feel like I'm making contact. So, can't get into a 6 either. Um, so, they're not very helpful in that respect. So, we'll look at some of the functionality of the instruments. You can see our first position there on the function switch is for amps, AC or DC. You can use our select button here to cycle through. And there's AC, uh, DC, and just flip between the two. Uh, you hold it in, it should go back to auto. And you get your frequency measurement up there as well. If it switches to AC, to inrush, you just hit the inrush and it's automatically selectable, but it always goes to AC amps on inrush it doesn't have a setting for DC amps. Um, with regard to accuracy on that we can read up to 600 amps on the clamp and we are 2% plus or minus 5 digits for both AC and DC. Moving round we get onto the voltage function where we also can access the temperature function as well and we can read up to 600 volts on the instrument for both AC and DC. For DC we are 0.8% plus three digits and for AC we are 1% plus three digits 
for between a frequency of 40 hertz and 1 kilohertz to get to our temperature. It does seem a bit pickety when it does this. And uh, yep, it's not going to do it now either. You can hear it beep, but it doesn't like to uh, switch over to it. So we'll uh, try again. I like it. DC. I don't like it either. Yeah, that the real problem is it doesn't seem to want to get to uh, degree C. Uh, just occasionally, there we go. Now we've gone. No, nope, we haven't. Yeah, I don't know why it's been so awkward. I know this does need an adapter to work with a K type thermocouple, and I don't have the adapter, so it may be when you plug the adapter in that it becomes more amenable to switching to the degree C. And degrees F function. It does do it occasionally, but it doesn't seem to want to do it at this moment in time, does it? So yeah, that function is there, but I can't seem to get it to work on my instrument too well. Uh, flipping round, we are on our ohms, diode, continuity and capacitance. So for resistance, we can measure up to 60 mega ohms at 1.5% plus 3 digits. For capacitance, we can measure up to 60 millifarads. Um, up to 600 microfarads, that's 1.5% plus 5 digits. And then for 6 millifarads, we get 2% plus 10. And then for 60 millifarads, we're on 10% tolerance. Uh, I don't have any specifications for the continuity and the diode test, but we can take a look at them uh, as we're doing a bit of testing. Uh, flip them around again, and we then go to microamps DC, which is off the jacks here and not on the clamp function. Uh, again, it's AC and DC, and both of them are 1.5% plus five digits tolerance. And then finally, we can go to our watts, and with this we get uh, watts and power factor, and then as we move through, we can get bar, and we can get VA, and then we move to DC watts then as well. Uh, I can measure up to 600 kilowatts, and we are 5% plus 5 digits up to 60 kilowatts for our 600 kilowatts range. We are 10% plus 5 digits. And what I didn't mention temperature wise, if you can get it to work, we'll measure from minus 20 degrees C up to 500 degrees C, plus or minus 1.5% for that one. So as I said, it does have a backlight on it. Quick press for that gives you uh, the backlight there. It's reasonably good, uh, but the screen itself, obviously, it is quite a bit bigger screen than a lot of clamp meters, but it's all split up, so the digits themselves are fairly standard size for a clamp meter. They're not certainly any real difference between the size of them. In fact, um, main digit-wise, they're a tad bit smaller than our uni TC there, and our camera, and then quite a bit smaller than the digits on our Kai wheat. So, yeah, it just depends what you prefer, really, doesn't it? So, we'll just give our continuity function a go. Um, it defaults to continuity when you take the function switch to that setting there, and it's not a particularly loud one, and it's not particularly fast. So, yeah, not the best of continuity functions there. Let's go over to our diode. Um, there is no beeping on the diode either, but we'll give it a go uh, nonetheless. And we have... Not doing very well here, are we? So there's our... Standard diode there, we've got an amber LED down the bottom there which does light up. And we've got our Schottky diode there, our Zena, yeah, which it likes that one. And that's reverse polarity, our power diode. And that's our other power diode. If we go reverse, we get our reading, so we're all fairly good with that one there. Let's have a look at our uh, LEDs here, and there's our red one all lit up, and we've got a reading, our green one is lit up, and we do have a reading, 
and we are lit up on our blue one as well but we've got no reading oh, did we get reading? Mm -hmm. oh, we do get reading and our white LED does light up and we've got a reading as well okay so four out of four with that one so what I have noticed is that the zero function on this only works with DC amps if I change the amps there shape to DC you see we've got 0.1 amps hit the zero and you can see we've zeroed it does uh, go back to zero amps there if I flip him round onto the ohm scale and the mega ohms there I'll plug him into my resistor bank Just this one here so I've got my resistor bank there you can see that's on uh, zero ohms hopefully see so I'm reading 0 0.12 ohms if I hit the zero there see nothing happens and it stays on 0 0.12 ohms so when I'm measuring the smaller lower value resistors that can obviously impact on the reading value there so you just have to take that into consideration same with capacitance as well we'll put capacitance we get there that's also on zero there we go I'm right this time and we get switched to capacitance We've got a residual capacitance of 0 0.0 0.076 nanofarads there zero button and you see it doesn't zero so it doesn't do anything in either of these two functions only works on DC amps so this is the first set of results table these are for the measurements made on the jacks of the instrument so uh, the AC and DC volts DC microamps uh, resistance and capacitance and the power measurements as well which obviously did use the clamp uh, but also needs the voltage input and power factor down there right at the bottom and as you can see they are all green they are all well within tolerance um, so there's not much to discuss there really uh, the only other thing to note is for the resistance and the capacitance where I showed that you can't actually zero the instruments for those first few readings, three or four readings, I have adjusted those values you see there, taking away the residual resistance when the uh, test boxes are set to zero. So you can stop the video here and take a more in-depth look at these readings if you want to. Uh, I'm going to move straight on over to the AC and DC current measurements. And you can see there they are again all green and all well within specification. When I was doing the inrush current measurements for the AC they were coming in at around about 5-6% to 6 higher uh, and out of specification. With a normal current measurement you can see they're all quite well within tolerance. Uh, a bit more deviation down at the bottom end but the, the top end is all well within 1% so there's nothing wrong with those measurements whatsoever. Uh, DC uh, follows a similar pattern as well. Obviously the DC inrush current measurement, the instrument isn't designed for that. So that's why the inrush current measurement didn't work for DC. So yeah, all the current measures I've made are all work within specification, all happy with that. So that's the review of the 770-3 clamp meter from Testo there. Apart from the inrush current facility, it seems to have pretty good accuracy from the measurements that I made. Obviously the one big thing that attracts me is this unique clamp function here to get me in places where I'd struggle with other clamp mechanisms. Um, so overall, I think it's on a fairly good price and gives you reasonable good value for money. Um, on the downside, of course, it's very limited in the accessories that you get with the instrument. Uh, there are options for you to go and buy the case and um, crocodile clips for the leads and so on. And of course, you do need to buy the adapter for the temperature measurements. So this meter can't make temperature measurements unless you buy that adapter and as we were testing we found out the zero facility is only for DC current you can't null the leads with this for resistance and capacitance so you have to adjust those values accordingly for better accuracy so there you go that's this one over with thanks very much for watching hope you found it useful and I'll see you again in the next one